Hi everyone, I'm really excited to bring you this video. My friend Bill Hallstrunk built himself a home up in the Green Mountains of Vermont. He did it a while ago, but this is the first interview he's ever done about the project. Uh, so thank you so much for you know inviting us up and letting us uh, do this project with you, this interview, and posting it online so that everybody gets to check it out, because it's really exciting. Uh, not only is the house really energy efficient, but he's also done other projects to make him more self-sufficient. Uh, he's got water sources and, and the wood stove and uh, gardens. So I'm going to do my best here to bring you all the excitement that um, I had while I was up there. This is the first of a couple of videos I'm going to break the interview into. This one is an overview. Uh, so I think everybody's going to enjoy this one. The next ones to come are going to be far more technical. So if you enjoy the technical stuff like me, stay tuned for that. Uh, otherwise, thank you all for checking it out. I hope you enjoy. Part of this was the neighbor uh, who was working at a, or is working at a granite shed came to me and said that um, they had been bringing in these big pallets. So Bombardia uh, was putting together railroad carriages up in Barrie. And basically they'd ship these big um, pallets with these wheel assemblies on them for, over from Germany. They'd take the wheel assemblies off and they were just stacking these pallets up. Okay. So he, he, it was actually his idea of, do you think maybe you, you might be able to use some pallets? And I thought to myself, I built card houses before yeah uh, how much how much harder can it be and literally that was kind of the thought about it i i, I don't want to say there wasn't any any thought to engineering but the thought is i'm standing these things up i'm i'm lag screwing and bolting them into place and they make up the bulk of the structure that we're we're currently living in <laughs> so your house is literally built out of pallets <laughs> <laughs> out of pallets yes every time i i make Mention that to people, they just you know they just can't understand how you how you could do that. Now these pallets, which is awesome, I are, mean, are bigger than your normal pallet, <laughs> but they are they were a pallet. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, it makes up the uh, the walls, the floor, and the roof of the of the the house we're in. When we uh, initially built this, there was a garage uh, downstairs. Uh, so to, to insulate that space, the, the cavity between the first and second floor is also insulated. And that's, mm -hmm. those are also pallets that are making up that, that floor system as well. Let's uh, create a, a space above the garage, a living area, where we could basically live there and then we could work on the house after that. Mm -hmm. So that was the original idea. So the, the apartment over the garage was really kind of a temporary um, measure just until we got money from the bank. So that was in uh, 1999. We were worried about the winter. Um, so the goal was we have to get in here before the winter comes and we were able to do that. And I literally spent the summer um, constructing and finishing that off so that we could be be in here. Mm -hmm. um, that was the goal and we were able to, able to accomplish it. We broke ground in 1998. Winter came, we had to stop. The next season did everything to the point where it was by Thanksgiving we were in the space made in November basically <laughs> was the, was the time period. By that time we were in this space uh, a couple of years and to be honest, we didn't feel like it was really a necessity at that point to be building another large, large building. And we decided that if we could convert the downstairs, which was the garage, into a living area, that would be okay. That would you know, be a, you know, an adequate size for the, for the two of us. I had learned enough about super insulation where I said, you know what, I want to do this downstairs. And the goal of, also the goal, the, my personal goal for fixing up the downstairs was, can I actually make it so that the house uses less energy while doubling our living space? <laughs> and it sounds like that's, you know, it's a ridiculous thing. We went about tearing out the garage doors, framing up the walls, uh, double, double stud wall. Dense pack actually is in the, the walls, uh, in the roof, but with the dense pack cellulose, we ended up with a lot tighter 
uh, more energy efficient and comfortable building than I believe would have been possible with uh, other insulation systems. Mm -hmm. And we did that at a cost that, you know, was just, uh, you know, way, <laughs> way below any, anything else. It is a true six inches upstairs, that wall. Okay. And downstairs, it is uh, true 13 inches. The six inches wasn't good enough. And uh, yeah, I think the magic <laughs> number for a really well-performing wall is is, you know a foot thick performance level I was shooting for was uh, net zero you know super insulation net zero at that time okay. um, so that's kind of the, the threshold that we were looking at with with this and the windows that we put in reflected this as well they're not just regular double pane they were at the time uh, you know some of the more efficient windows that we could could get hold of. We decided to go with the high end of the R5 windows. These have a heat mirror in them and they're filled with Krypton gas. There are certain things that I did that I'm really happy for and other things that maybe I would have done a little different if I had known that we were going to be in here. The windows upstairs are all Andersons. In fact, two of them are windows that my brother had given me uh, coming off of another project. Those are double pane. They were the slim line. So they were, you know, probably in the order of R two and a half. The house is kind of small. And, and again, uh, at this time we were living just upstairs. Okay. And I needed some space really to, to have an office. So what I decided was the, the building style really lent itself to extending the wall on one side and just bringing that roof, extending that roof out and putting the office in. And I was experimenting still at this time. I didn't, at this point, this was before we, we renovated the downstairs, uh, I was still looking at what is the best uh, way of building it. So the office actually has some uh, polyiso on the, in the floors and on the wall. So the office uh, wall construction is a two by four wall with two inches of poly ISO on the outside and then uh, horizontal strapping on the inside, giving me six inches in the wall. So I got six inches of dense back cellulose and two inches of poly ISO on the outside. It had snowed really heavy one winter where we got two back to back storms of two feet and then over a foot and the snow plow that we had coming in gave up. And so I went down and I bought a snow blower, hand snow blower, and I was uh, gonna snow blow the way, the, the road path out of here. Unfortunately, it's a quarter mile long and it became real apparent real quick that uh, this isn't gonna cut it for the long period of time. So I wanted to get a little bit more self-sufficient in there. And the big expense of this whole project was the tractor uh, okay. that I bought with the snowblower. And because it needed a home, I built a tractor shed on the other side of the building that is insulated uh, solely with that foam board in the ceiling in the walls. Now what I hear when I go in there is chewing because there are mice now. If I did it all over again it, or if we ever decide to build another house, uh, the only place these days that I would be uh, thinking that foam could be helpful is below grade, maybe below the slab. In the, in the cellulose portion of the house, we don't have rodents and mice. It's, it's not been a problem. Yes, and it's interesting because I teach a super insulation class and there are a lot of folks coming into that class that are interested in passive solar. Um, what I've learned over the years and even in this house, because of the size of it, I get to see kind of the benefits of, of the passive solar gain. Where you can incorporate some south facing glazing, it's nice. And I, I, I'll be the first to say in the winter time, sitting in front of those windows on a nice clear, cloudless winter day when it's, you know, really cold outside, mm -hmm. it feels nice. And those are days we don't have to run our, our wood stove. So the outside is uh, metal siding. Um, it goes back to this was a garage and for a garage you probably wouldn't think that metal siding was was uh, an unusual choice. Uh, the other nice thing about it is that it is really maintenance free. So there's no painting involved in it. I actually extended it below grade uh, as well so nothing's gonna 
get through the get through the metal um, and, and get behind it. To the right is uh, my office. Off to the left is the tractor shed. The well head is here, and the location of that was determined by the dowser. The dowser came up from the Dowsing Society of Vermont, uh, brought out his pendulum, his uh, bent coat hangers and his uh, forked stick and was able to pinpoint the location of it, the depth of it, and the quality of the water. And I can attest that he was right on with all of those. Here's the propane tank in the back. It's uh, about a 500 gallon tank. Uh, we fill this up about once every two years and we utilize the propane for cooking and uh, for the hot water. The building actually is uh, three feet underground on the back. So the slope of the land goes up from the front of the building. So the thought also back when I built it was this idea of, well, it could be earth sheltered on the back and that might help a little bit with the, uh, um, that could help a little bit maybe with the energy use. About two years ago, uh, I thought that an animal had gotten uh, underneath the this back this actually this corner of the of the building, and I excavated out the uh, dirt to try to figure out what was going on. It gave me the opportunity actually to take a look at the exterior sheathing, and at the time I I did pull it off and take a look at it, and there was no sign of any kind of damage. And again, that was after at that point uh, 15 years of being being buried. So the one thing I, I made sure I did around the building is drainage because for one reason we're at the bottom of a slope. So if you look in the back, the property actually rises. So I was concerned about water running through here in a high water event and possibly causing problems. So I have some pretty large stones down in here all the way around the building uh, with the drain pipe uh, connecting them all. And that pipe over in the corner actually is... Uh, just a vertical in case I ever needed to flush anything out. Yeah, so on the front side of the house, uh, these panels uh, are these uh, Harbor Freight 15 watt amorphous panels. I purchased those uh, 10 years ago or so. We have a little battery uh, system in the bedroom in case the power goes out. We have lights and the ability to plug in electronics to charge them. Here are my wood piles. Uh, last year actually was a fairly cold winter, so we went through a cord. What I like to do is burn a, a fast, hot, efficient fire. That heat, that gets absorbed by the thermal mass and the cellulose and everything else, basically keeps the house to coast for the next, uh, you know, 12 hours or so. We're past peak uh, flowering season coming into the fall here, but uh, uh, blueberries. So uh, that's the one thing that really does well here. Um, very little maintenance uh, with them and they just, you know, produce. So it's my favorite fruit. And here's some wild grapes here. This particular bush actually is my favorite. <laughs> So here's the, uh, the garden shed, and it has a rainwater collection system on it. And one thing I learned about rainwater collection in my many years of operating it is this is the key to rainwater collection. It's basically a screen over the gutter. It just keeps things from getting into it to begin with. This one just works flawlessly, and we use this one to water the blueberries. This is the ultra s simple system that I've, I've moved to. Basically a stock tank with a uh, <laughs> pet screening on top, and we just gravity feed it down to where we, where we use it. This is our uh, heating system, our wood stove. It is a little oversized for the, the energy performance of the house. The only thing I would do differently and, and let people know that if they put in a wood stove is this horizontal pipe. That is where 
where you're going to get the most build up. And if I did it again, I would redesign everything to not have this horizontal section. I like the wood stove. When the ice storm came and the power was out for a week, we used it right through the storm there without any, any problem. So this is a double wall pipe uh, coming up through here so it doesn't get too hot. Our cook stove propane uh, fired top uh, electric uh, oven. So on the uh, on my homemade uh, heat recovery ventilator, here is the uh, fresh air coming into the building. There's one here in the in the kind of the dining room area, and there's one in the bedroom on the other side of this wall. Probably may not even be able to hear it. So right now the fan is on. It's not a high CFM system, but we run it co constantly. So in that concentric system, it's pulling in the cold air on the inner pipe and it's blowing out through the outer one. So the reason why we don't see uh, condensation and we don't, I believe we don't need insulation on it, is that cold air is surrounded by the outgoing uh, inside air that's blowing out. Back in 1999, heat, uh, HRVs and ERVs were really expensive. And the one thing I never really liked about them is they were, they were set so they're moving a substantial amount of air. Yeah, so uh, in this day and age, uh, with the new ones out there that are actually s are designed to work for smaller spaces, I would look into buying one instead of building one. So we're going to get to see the, uh, the homemade concentric heat exchanger. So uh, this is the concentric heat exchanger. Again, it runs from end to end. So there's a pipe within a pipe. There's a copper pipe inside here, two inch copper, surrounded by a four inch PVC. Back in 1999, didn't have a lot of money, but understood that I needed to have a ventilation system. So it really allowed me to build something up that's worked now for 17 years uh, quite effectively in the, in the building. So this is my unvented roof assembly. This is now strapped underneath. Then I dense packed this with cellulose. It's all about density. It should feel like a firm mattress. And this still, you know, 17 years later, still feels like that firm mattress. We can see the cellulose actually right up through here. That's where I had blown it in. So the R value in this area is approximately R30. That's way below what it would be if I built the house again. Well, I'll tell you that if I did redid this today, uh, this would be uh, R60 to R80. Uh, yeah, so I think what I've learned from this process is whatever you do that you think is just temporary and you think that, you know, it's only going to be for a little bit, always do things to your, the best of your ability. Um, you know, do it as if you were going to be there forever because things could change and who knows, you actually might be there forever. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about during the course of this, some of the things I would do differently. If I was doing this again, I would super insulate the, the entire building. Thank you so much, Bill. Yes. Thank you, David, for, for stopping by. <laughs>